okay first let's draw your inguinal ligament okay inguinal ligament so the inguinal ligament extends from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way to the pubic tubercle okay pubic tubercle this particular point now the superficial inguinal ring okay is a triangular opening in the external oblique muscle okay triangular opening in the external oblique muscle the deep ring is a u shaped horizontally placed u shaped opening in the fascia transversalis and we told you the roof is formed by the arched fibers of conjoint tendon okay arched fibers of the conjoint tendon so if the hernia is coming out through the inguinal canal it is going to come from the deep ring through the canal through the superficial or the external inguinal ring and then over the pubic tubercle and medial to the pubic tubercle okay so this is how a inguinal hernia occurs now there is an important vascular structure okay that is your inferior epigastric artery okay inferior epigastric artery which comes okay now the inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery and eventually this external iliac artery is going to become the femoral artery lower down okay now along with the inferior epigastric artery you are going to have the inferior epigastric vein and that is a branch of the external iliac vein external iliac vein so this is the basic anatomy which i want you guys to remember and this will help us a lot especially when we are going to talk about the laparoscopic anatomy of the inguinal region now two important questions that can arise from this laparoscopic anatomy first one they will ask you about the various triangles okay that is triangle of pain triangle of doom and corona mortis okay and the second one they will ask you to identify direct and a indirect hernia okay so these are the two questions that can arise from this so that is why i want you guys to understand the laparoscopic anatomy because it's a bit confusing because till now we have only seen the anatomy from the outside but we have not seen the anatomy from the inside okay so for that let's revisit our image that we have drawn so let's assume we are seeing this image from the inside now okay so when we are seeing it from the inside there are two things that you have to keep in mind this inguinal ligament is a structure on the outside okay if it's on the outside you can't see it from the inside but you can see an impression which corresponds to the inguinal ligament so you can't call it as a inguinal ligament when you're seeing it from the inside instead you're going to call it as a iliopubic tract so the same line is called as the iliopubic tract okay now cord structures are going to enter the deep ring then they're going to go through the inguinal canal and then exit outside okay now what are the cord structures made up of okay cord structures let's broadly divide them into blood vessels vas deferens and nerves okay so these are the three subheadings uh, under which we are going to understand this first let's talk about blood vessels blood vessels means which vessels is going to go you're going to have your testicular artery pampiniform plexus of veins and all so eventually there's something that is going to supply the gonad so we're going to call them as a gonadal vessels gonadal vessels okay now these gonadal vessels arise from where eventually it has to arise from the aorta okay aorta is a retroperitoneal structure so from the retroperitoneum if it has to come to the anterior abdominal wall it's going to come through the lateral route correct it's going to come from the side that is how the gonadal vessels are going to reach the deep inguinal ring okay so let's draw the gonadal vessels here the gonadal vessels are going to come from the lateral aspect so this is the gonadal vessels next let's talk about the vas deferens okay now vas deferens basically carries the semen from the testis and eventually has to exit through the urethra correct through the prostate seminal vesicles and through the urethra it has to go out so but where is this prostate and seminal vesicle it's on the medial aspect okay so your vas deferens is going to go medially okay it is going to go medially like this okay your vas deferens is going to go medially empty into the seminal vesicles of the prostate and then it's going to go out through the urethral opening okay so that is how sperms are going to travel now last one is the nerves okay now nerves also where are they going to arise from it has to arise from the spinal cord correct where is spinal cord spinal cord is also a retroperitoneal structure so from the spinal cord if it has to reach the anterior abdominal that also has to come through lateral okay from the lateral it's going to come 
so nerves are going to come laterally in this particular area so this is where the nerves are there the green one is the nerves okay so this is the laparoscopic anatomy which we are seeing from the inside okay now what's going to happen the last one is your peritoneum okay this is the peritoneum okay so just a quick recap cord structures are made up of three basic structures that is the vessels the vas deferens and the nerves vessels in other terminology basically means gonadal vessels vas deferens and the nerves gonadal vessel has to arise from the aorta so it's going to come laterally okay from the lateral it's going to come to the anterior abdominal wall and then it's going to go out vas deferens has to come medially okay it has to come medially because it has to exit into the prostate and nerves also have to come from the spinal cord that means that also comes laterally okay and the peritoneum is here the reflected surface of the peritoneum is here so in surgery when i'm doing a laparoscopic surgery and i see from the inside i have to dissect all these areas in order to put the mesh okay i have to put a mesh here okay i have to put a mesh so when i'm putting a mesh i have to dissect out the cord structures we have to skeletonize the cord so whenever i'm doing that i have to be very careful in this area that is between the vas deferens and the gonadal vessels that is because there are two important blood vessels here that is your external iliac artery and your external iliac vein so while i'm doing something here if i damage i'm going to have torrential bleeding okay torrential bleeding so vas deferens medially gonadal vessels laterally reflected surface of the peritoneum inferiorly if i do something here i can damage the external iliac and the internal iliac vein okay so that is the reason this is called as triangle of doom in this particular area now if i go more laterally okay that is the area between the gonadal vessel the iliopubic tract the iliopubic tract and the reflected surface of the peritoneum this is where the nerves are there so after i put a mesh in this particular area if i put sutures or tackers there if i put sutures or tackers there i can start compressing the nerve or the nerve might get entrapped in my tacker and the patient can have chronic pain so that is why this area okay that area is called as triangle of pain okay so medially it's by the gonadal vessels laterally or superiorly it is from the iliopubic tract and inferiorly or laterally it is by the reflected surface of the peritoneum so no confusion pretty straight forward vas deferens medially gonadal vessel laterally peritoneum inferiorly in this area external iliac artery external iliac vein is there so if you try to do something you will damage you will have torrential bleeding that's why it's called triangle of doom lateral to this area that means between the gonadal vessel the iliopubic tract and the reflected surface of the peritoneum if you put a tacker here or a suture here the nerves might get entrapped and the patient can have chronic pain now if you put both of these together that means one triangle like this one triangle like this you're going to get what we call as a trapezoid of disaster so both of them put together you're going to get the trapezoid of disaster okay 